Hello and welcome to BK Hobby again. Today I'm going to start a new series to show you how to build your own home automation system using OpenHAB and Raspberry Pi and give you a basic understanding of OpenHAB so you can go from there and build out your system step by step. So basically you just need a Raspberry Pi. In this case I'm using Raspberry Pi version 2 which is plenty good enough to run even the more advanced OpenHAB system. You're going to need a micro SD card in this case, I'm using a 16 gigabyte SanDisk, and that's more than enough because we're only going to be using it to start up the Raspberry Pi, and we're going to be running the actual file system off this USB flash drive. The reason for this is simple. OpenHAB writes a lot of logs, and these SD cards are just not built to handle all those writes. I've had two of them fail in a very short amount of time after installing my original OpenHAB system until I switched to booting up the Raspberry Pi off the SD card and actually running it off of the USB flash drive. In this case, I'm also using a SanDisk drive, and this one is 32 gigabytes. So absolutely the easiest way to install OpenHAB on the Raspberry Pi is to use the OpenHabian image. This project, originally created by Thomas Dietrich, takes all the guesswork out of installing the Raspbian system, installing all the tools necessary to edit OpenHAB configuration files. It creates Samba shares for you so you can access the configuration files remotely and installs a lot of other tools that you may or may not use in, in configuring your own system. So for the Raspberry Pi we just need to download this image file right here. So I'm going to click on it and let it download to my downloads folder and also while that's downloading I'm going to go to www.etcher.io. Etcher is a tool that you use to burn the image file onto the SD card. I found it's the easiest tool to use for Windows. So I'm gonna download the Windows X64 version and let it install. And now that I have it installed my desktop, I'm gonna go open it and I'll take my SD card and put it into my computer using an SD card reader. As soon as I put my SD card into the computer, Etcher finds it, so now I can use it. I'm gonna select the image from my downloads folder, hit open, it's already selected the SD card but just in case, you want to make sure you're writing it to the right one. And I'm just going to hit flash to let it burn the image. And this is going to take a few minutes. Okay, so the flash completed. And I can close out of Etcher. Next, I'll remove the SD card from the card reader. And now I can plug it into my Raspberry Pi. I'm going to leave the USB drive off for now. We'll get to that later. Now I'm going to take an Ethernet cable and plug it into the Ethernet port on the Raspberry Pi, as well as my router. OpenHabian needs internet access while it's installing. Next, I'm going to insert the power plug and let OpenHabian do its thing. Now this is very important. Do not touch the Raspberry Pi for about three hours. Leave it overnight. Do not restart it. OpenHabian will do its thing and it will install everything correctly but you definitely need to arm yourself with patience. After about three hours, you should be able to access the OpenHabian Pi on your browser. So you're gonna type in TTP backslash backslash OpenHabian Pi colon 8080. Hit enter. And what you will see is the initial setup screen for OpenHab 2. I'll talk more about this later. For now, we need to access the SSH interface on your OpenHabian Pi and do some other configuration things. First, you're going to have to put your USB drive into your newly configured OpenHabian Pi. And then we're going to need to access it over SSH. For you Windows users, the easiest thing to do is to download the PuTTY client. It's very lightweight and useful. So in my PuTTY configuration, when I open the client, I'm going to type in OpenHabian Pi and hit open. The first time you connect to your OpenHabian Pi via SSH, you're going to get this security alert from PuTTY. This is just PuTTY asking you if you trust this client. We do trust it, so I'm going to hit yes. You will log in as OpenHabian. And the default password is also OpenHabian. You'll want to change this later once the system is installed. And I'm logged in. And now we see that we're in the proper OpenHabian image and everything has been set up and we're running OpenHab. So the first thing we want to do is open up OpenHabian config. To do this, we'll need to do it as a super user. So we'll type sudo OpenHabian config and hit enter. 
it will ask for our super user password, which is again, the default one is still open Habian. And now we've opened up the configuration tool. The first thing you want to do is select update and hit enter. This will update the open Habian configuration tool, pulling down any important changes that may have been implemented since the image was created. So I'll hit enter here and that completed. Next, I want to upgrade the system. This will pull down any packages for the Raspberry Pi image or update any other operating system software. So we'll hit enter here. And the upgrade has completed successfully. There's a couple of additional tools I like to install on my OpenHab system using OpenHabian before starting to work on the configuration. So we'll select optional components. And one of the most important tools is this log viewer called Frontail. This tool allows you to open up a web browser and go to a web page that will display all of the latest entries into your OpenHab log. This is very useful for troubleshooting faults and just making sure your system is working correctly. So I'll go ahead and install this. And that completed the installation. I'll go back to optional components and I'll install the Mosquito Broker. If you don't know what Mosquito is, it's a tool I'll definitely be making more videos about as it's a very powerful message broker that allows OpenHab to communicate with your sensors, for example, getting temperature and humidity data, or other devices that allow you to send commands via MQTT. So we'll definitely go ahead and install this on this configuration. We'll hit continue here. In my case, since my Raspberry Pi is behind a firewall on the internal side of my network, I'm not too worried about providing a username password combination here. You can, if you prefer, to secure your Mosquito Broker. Okay, so for now we'll skip this warning that pops up here and we'll find out about bindings in the next video in this series. Go back to optional components and you can check out some of these other tools here as well. For now, I'm gonna skip over installing any of these. The next option we need to select is system settings. You can change things like the host name, the locale, time zone, or change the passwords. If you want to secure your system a little bit better, I definitely recommend doing this. But the most important option that we need to select here is this last one, move root to USB. Since we installed the USB key in the Raspberry Pi, we can now do this. It's much more reliable to run your Raspberry Pi from that USB key than this from the built-in SD card. So I'm gonna select this option to move root to USB and hit enter. There's a warning that pops up telling me I'm gonna delete everything that's on that USB key. Since it's a brand new key, I don't care. So I'm gonna hit continue. And the first time you do this, you might see this pop up. Basically the USB port had to be set to high power and it's telling me to reboot and recall this menu item. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So hit okay. And now we need to reboot the Raspberry Pi. So in order to do that, we just type in sudo reboot, hit enter. And it's telling me that the PuTTY client lost connection with the Raspberry Pi. We'll hit okay here. We'll give the Raspberry Pi a minute or two to restart. After about a minute, we'll right click on PuTTY and select restart session and we'll log back in, open Habian, open Habian. And now we'll go back into the open Habian config tool. So do open Habian config, type in the open Habian password for super user. Again, the default one is open Habian. And now we need to go back into that system settings menu item, hit enter and select move root to USB one more time. We'll hit continue again. And it's just telling me that this may take a while between five to 15 minutes. So we'll hit okay and wait. Okay, so after about 10 minutes, moving the root to the USB has finished. So now I need to reboot so the Raspberry Pi can start up using the root file system on the USB key. So I'll hit OK, exit out of open having config, and we'll reboot again. Give it another couple minutes, and we'll restart the session on PuTTY. Now just to show you that I'm running from the USB key, I will type mount. And you will notice that device MMC block zero, which is the SD card, is still running the boot sector, basically starting up the Raspberry Pi. But the root file system is now running on device SDA1, which is the USB key. So this completes the setup we need to do with open having config. And we're done with SSH, so we can exit out. And now we can open up a browser window and we can type in our Raspberry Pi's IP address followed by a colon and then 8080. Hit enter. And there's a few ways to go from here. If you're a beginner and this is your first time with OpenHab and you're still learning about the architecture, I definitely recommend going with the demo setup. 
What that will do is create a simulated OpenHab configuration with all the user interfaces pre-populated with some demo switches, color selection tools, and other things. The benefit of this option is it will create configuration files that you can tailor to your own setup. And it shows you how those items have to be configured. The other three options expect you to already know the OpenHab architecture. So in this case, we'll go with the demo setup. After a while, you will start seeing new tiles pop up on your window. This first one here is the OpenHab log viewer. And if you click on that, it will take you to the front tail log viewer that we installed using OpenHab and config. So just by looking at this log viewer, you can see we have some errors with the configuration. There's some info alerts that pop up and status information, for example, for your sensors. The neat thing is you can also filter all these log entries by typing in things in the filter field. For example, error will only show us the errors that occurred in the log. Okay, but we'll back out of here for now. So the first user interface that gets installed is the basic UI. And you can click on it here and it'll show you the user interface with the demo items already set up. This allows you to click through and, and see some of the items that were configured in this demo version. You see this demo sitemap already has some weather information set up, including some charts. One interesting thing to look at is the astronomical data, which uses the astro binding. And you can also look at the widget overview to see some of the possible types of widgets you can use in your user interface. But we'll also back out of this basic UI for now. Now, one of the most important user interfaces to look at is Paper UI. This is the configuration interface for OpenHab itself. So we'll click on Paper UI, and you can see there's menu items here for configuring your system, adding bindings, services, or changing preferences. We'll leave it off here for now. In the next video in the series, I'll explain to you exactly what bindings, items, sitemaps, rules are, and how to modify them to configure your home automation system. We'll take it to the next step and actually automate some lights. So please go ahead and subscribe and watch my videos. Until next time, this is BK Hobby. Thank you.